What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Revis Talk Sports. I am back with an NFL divisional board prediction. In this video, I will be talking about the AFC East. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. So the first team I will be talking about is the Buffalo Bills. And this is a bold prediction video, right? So why not get bold with this one? So the bold prediction that I have for the Bills is that Keon Coleman will lead all rookie receivers in touchdown catches. Quite a hot take. I definitely understand. But I understand that he doesn't have elite route running ability like Marvin Harrison Jr. He doesn't have breakaway speed like Brian Thomas Jr. or, or uh, Malik Neighbors. The reason why I have Keon Coleman as the rookie receiver to lead in touchdown catches is the Buffalo Bills' ability to get into the red zone. Since 2020, the Buffalo Bills have been top five in red zone scoring attempts, touchdown only, and top five in total offense yards since 2020. I understand a lot of it has been contributed to Stephon Diggs, as well as Gabe Davis coming into play, but Josh Allen doesn't have Stephon Diggs or Gabe Davis anymore. He is looking for that wide receiver one, and Josh Allen could definitely play freely without having the pressure to force feed a wide receiver. Josh Allen is one of the top dual threat quarterbacks in this league, and he's probably going to be consistently a top five MVP candidate. The reason why I have him over Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors is because with the Arizona Cardinals, how much stock can we put into Kyler Murray playing a full season? I mean, he hasn't played a full season since 2020, so that is you know, something to consider. And they've also been about top 15, top 20 in red zone scoring attempts. And then the New York Giants, they gave up the most sacks last year. How much did they really, really improve on the offensive line? Can they stay healthy? Can they trust Daniel Jones to continue to be a pocket passer in the pocket? When do they shut him down and bring Drew Locke in? They have Wandale Robinson, Jalen Hyatt, Darius Slayton, Isaiah Hodgins. They got Allen Robinson. There's a lot of mouths to feed in that wide receiver room, but I just cannot trust that New York Giants offense just yet to get Malik Neighbors involved, especially in scoring opportunities, unless he has, you know, yards after catch to make those touchdown passes. And besides, the New York Giants have been ranked consistently in the 30s and red zone scoring attempts since 2020. So between Daniel Jones, Drew Locke, Kyler Murray being healthy, I'm going to have to give the edge to the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen consistently putting the Buffalo Bills in scoring position. The defense is newly renovated, so they might be playing catch up a lot just due to how um, changed of the defense is. But because of that, Josh Allen, he's going to look for that wide receiver in the red zone. Keon Coleman, six foot three, 38 inch vertical leap. During his time at Florida State, he has a sub 4% drop rate so i see him being someone that josh allen can trust in the red zone tall target he could be a big slot target and i just see josh allen looking his way a lot just for jump ball opportunities now the next team that we'll be talking about is the new york jets and i believe they will finish above 500 for the first time since 2015. now this is contingent on how healthy the offensive line can be can they protect Aaron Rodgers? And can Aaron Rodgers play a full season? That's pretty much what's going to come down to because the New York Giants, the New York, sorry, the New York Jets have a top five defense. Like the defense is fine, but on terms of offense, that offense has been subpar, especially last year, where last year they were ranked 30th in passing yards per game, 31st in yards per pass attempt. 31st in completion percentage, 32nd in passing touchdowns per game, and 32nd in average passer rating. You cannot win games with that kind of statistics and that kind of subpar quarterback play. Um, if Aaron Rodgers can stay healthy and definitely be in the pocket with the line protecting him and the line's healthy, he could get Garrett Wilson involved. He could get Conklin involved, Brees Hall involved, Mike Williams, uh, Malachi Corley. He could get all of them involved. And honestly, I trust a 40-year-old Aaron Rodgers than I do with a mid-20 Zach Wilson. If Aaron Rodgers could stay healthy and the, and the line is protecting him, he could get those passing rankings top 20. Top 20, if you could consistently 
perform on a top 20 ranking basis and pretty much every statistical category passing wise, they're going to win games and they will definitely finish above 500. They have the defense. Defense definitely wins championships, but they need an offense to move the ball down the field. They need an offense to get completions and score touchdowns. Healthy Aaron Rodgers, full season. This can be the year that the New York Jets can finish above 500 and try to battle for that wild card spot. Now, the next team I'm going to be talking about is the Miami Dolphins. And my bold prediction is that Tua Tagovailoa will throw at least 30 touchdown passes, and that will be a career high for him. Tua, ever since Tyreek Hill came to the Miami Dolphins in 2022, the Miami offense has been so explosive and so scary to opposing defenses. Tua's game has elevated, as you see, from 2021. He threw for 2,653 with 16 touchdowns. 2022, when Tyreek came in, it's jumped up nearly 1,000 extra passing yards. Touchdown passes went up about extra 10. And then he led the league last year in passing yards, 29 touchdown passes. So as long as Tyreek Hill is there, Jalen Wall is healthy. Tua can definitely get at least 30 touchdown passes. Now, looking at their schedule, the last six weeks is very, very tough. So he's going up against tough teams that have pretty good passing defense, such as I think the Jets is one of them, the Cleveland Browns. I don't have it in front of me, but very tough passing defenses. So pretty much they're going to have to start off fast the first 11 games. And if Tua can average about two and a half touchdown passes in the first 11 games, that leaves them at about 27 and a half touchdowns. And I'm sure he can kind of get a couple in there in the grueling last six weeks of the season in which he could definitely get at least 30 or surpass 30 for the first time in his career. As long as Tyreek Hill is there, Jalen Wall is there, Moser is there, Devon Achan should definitely be healthy and be there. They got rookie running back Jalen Wright, who is, he reminds me a lot like Aaron Jones, who's just a bowling ball and very shifty. Um, they also got a sleeper draft pick in Malik Washington, who I can definitely see himself rotating in and out with Odell Beckham. Since 2020 in uh, NCAA football, Malik Washington actually has more missed tackles than Malik Neighbors. So Malik Washington could definitely make people miss on the first try. He could definitely get yards after catch. He led college football last year in receiving yards and and I believe he was top three or top five in yards after the catch so this team is elite this team's gonna be explosive I understand that the offensive line is very different this upcoming season new left guard new center new right guard so it's very up in the air on how well this new line can protect Tua but Tua did rank first last season in pocket time to release the ball from the time the ball was snapped to him to getting the ball to his receivers. In two seconds, he led the NFL in pocket time getting the ball out in two seconds. So whether they block him and give him enough time or if they are just doing just enough to give him at least two seconds to get the ball off, Tua could definitely replicate last season and definitely get 30 touchdown passes. And besides, Tua has been one of the top quarterbacks in deep ball accuracy rating and completion percentage. He was second in 2023 in yards per attempt, led the league in passing yards, like I said. So definitely Tua has been on fire ever since Tyreek has joined the Miami Dolphins in 2022. They have Odell Beckham, Malik Washington, and I believe that Tua could definitely get a career high in touchdown passes this upcoming season. He has to start off fast in the first 11 games so that he can definitely get it through the last six weeks. And last but not least, the team that I'm going to be talking about is the New England Patriots. Unfortunately, I think they will finish with the worst record in the NFL. How much do we think that Gerard Merrill would do a better job than what Bill Belichick did last season? I don't think he would do better than what Belichick did. Yes, Mac Jones is there. They have Jacoby Brissett in as quarterback. So definitely better quarterback play. Don't think they did much on the offensive line to um, consistently block Jacoby Brissett. 
on an every down basis. Don't think they did much to improve the wide receiver room. So this offense is going to be very subpar. Um, the defense may be their strongest attribute, but we don't know because Bill Belichick was a defensive minded guru. Now we have Gerard Mayo. I don't think there's, I do not think there will be much expectation this upcoming season. There's going to be a lot of regressing. It's Gerard Mayo's first head coaching job. Um, so I don't think much is expected from the Patriots. Um, this team is definitely going to do their best to compete, but just looking at their schedule, I can definitely see them being underdogs in damn near every single game. It's going to be a rough season for the Patriots fans. I believe it's going to be a rough season for the team as a whole. But me, unfortunately, just based on how the team looks from a talent standpoint, new coach, don't think he could do any better than what Bill Belichick did last season. And I think this is the season where the Patriots will have the worst record and probably get that number one pick in the 2025 draft and also see what they could do next free agent to definitely rebuild this team to Gerard Mayo's liking. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content, please give the, please give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I make weekly football content every Mondays and Friday. So thank you so much and catch you next time.